So welcome to another episode of CEA with your favorite PLTW teacher, Mr. Seward. Today, we're gonna to be looking at uh, PowerPoint number 2.3.10A, and it's about wastewater management. The first eight slides here talk about how wastewater is managed. It uh, does talk about the reuse of wastewater. They talk about how it's treated, how it's discharged, uh, by cities and towns and such as that that have public treatment facilities. So we're going to take a look starting here with slide number nine. You, first eight, you can go back and review yourself. But what we notice from this is that there are some minimum sizes. So you can use either a three or four inch uh, pipe size diameter for residences. If you have a multifamily building, the diameter of pipe jumps up to six inches. And if it's an industrial facility, eight inches at least. Another thing is the depth of the pipe. The going into the septic system uh, where it exits the house, that pipe has to be at least two feet below the lowest floor with any sort of sanitary sewage drainage. And it also has to be below frost depth, which depends upon the area you're, at, you're sitting at. Where we live right now, uh, frost depth is probably somewhere around 42 inches. The minimum sewer lateral slope, uh, the lateral is the pipe that runs from the house to the main septic line, has to be be at a slope of one eighth of an inch per foot, which is a 1% slope. But uh, that slope amount depends on the drainage fixture units that are served. And we'll look at what drainage fixture units are in a few seconds. There also has to be 10 foot minimum horizontal distance between water and sewer lines in your house. And sewer lines have to be at least 18 inches below the uh, water supply lines. So when we specify sewer lateral construction, the size, the depth, the slope, and the separation of the wastewater pipe must meet local code requirements. The International Building Code allows pipes smaller than three inches, but three inch diameter is the smallest pipe allowed to serve a discharge from a water closet. So therefore, a sewer lateral from a residence can't be any less than three inches in diameter. Now here in slide number 10, we learn about what are called drain fixture units. And these are the relative load of fixtures that are drained by a waste pipe in a building. So uh, if you take a look here, these drain fixture units, like a bathtub is two fixture units, dishwashers, two clothes washers, two. A floor drain has no value whatsoever. Laboratory sinks, tubs, uh, all the way up to water closets that have greater than 1.6 liters per flush, which are the value of four drain fixture units. So what you do is you take these drain fixture units, so you take a look at a, at a bathroom with a sink. Let's say it's got a lavatory. So that's got a value of one. You've got a tub with two. So anything that has a drain gets gets this one of these values. So that bathroom with a tub in it and a sink is going to be three. And then you have the water closet. And let's say we have a water efficient toilet so it's 1.6 gallons per flush is another three so our drain fixture units for that bathroom would be six in total three here uh two and then one that would be a total value of six drain fixture units slide 11 here is going to look at the slope of a pipe as it goes from the house to the sewer main so the slope of the pipe is gonna be uh, dependent upon your, uh, your uh, uh, 
drain fixture units. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. So the minimum number of drain fixture units allowed to be connected to a building drain or sewer. And then it's also dependent upon the diameter of pipe, either three inch or four inch. So um, no less than one eighth of an inch, by the way, per foot is a one percent. That's a one percent slope. So at one eighth of an inch, with a three inch pipe, is fine if you have uh, thirty six drain fixture units or fewer in your house. If your house has more than thirty six, up to forty two drain fixture units, then they have to change the slope per foot to a quarter of an inch. And then if you go to 50 drain fixture units on a three inch pipe, then they have to change the slope to one half an inch. I'm told by one of the local people that uh, I deal with for my house on the septic that they just usually use a quarter of an inch per foot uh, slope on a house, on a regular residential house. They really don't uh, worry too much about drain fixture units. They just know that that value uh, works for them. Uh, they tell me that if you exceed a quarter of an inch per foot on your drain on your slope, what happens is you end up with the water running right past the solids, and they don't take the water doesn't take the solids to the septic tanks uh, if you have a septic or to a, a sewer line. So that's for a three inch and then four inch. You can see the values here are significantly higher. This is more of a commercial use than what a three inch is really the residential use. On the slide number 12. Slide 12 is going to explain the parts of our septic system to us. So the first thing is the building drain. That collects the discharge from all the drainage piping inside the house and extends beyond the exterior walls of the home. This is going to be in the crawl space or in your basement. Uh, of your house. The building sewer line or the lateral as they call it uh, transports the wastewater from the house to the sewer main. And this is the sewer main out here. That's the big pipe that's underneath the roadway uh, out in front of your house. There is also a short vertical pipe uh, someplace that is called a clean out and that allows access from the ground surface so that any blockages that slow drainage or backups can be more easily removed. Now wastewater uh, is flow is typically dependent on gravity and the waste pipes must slope down and the direction of flow in order for the wastewater to be transported to the sewer main. So the water is coming from the house or the fluids to the sewer main. Now you know from your math classes that slope is simply rise over run. So when we apply this to a sewer lateral, the rise will be the distance that the pipe drops. In other words, the difference in the elevation of the pipe between where it leaves the house and where it connects to the sewer main. The invert elevation is the elevation of the inside bottom of the surface of the pipe where the water will flow. So we have the distance from the building to the main. The invert elevation is right here. This is the uh, high point of it. And then the slope is to the low point or the midpoint of the sewer main. So slide 13 shows us the formula that we're going to use to calculate the slope. Most local jurisdictions specify the connection details for sewer laterals to a sewer main. For purposes of this calculation, we're going to assume that the center of the sewer main which is right here, is at approximately the same elevation as the invert of the sewer lateral. Remember that invert means the bottom of, so that is the bottom of the sewer lateral coming out of the uh, building. 
the change in elevation, the rise, will be the difference between the invert elevation at the building and the invert elevation at the main. So from the bottom of the pipe here to the uh, invert elevation at the main, which is the main is right here. Crown elevation refers to elevation at the top of the pipe. So this is the crown elevation. That's the elevation at the top of the pipe. Therefore, the elevation in the center of the sewer main is about equal to the crown elevation to minus half of the outside diameter of the sewer main, which is an 8-inch sewer main, I believe. Slide 14 shows us the formula that we're going to use to verify that we have a proper slope for the septic going from the house to the sewer main. So we're going to take the invert elevation at the building, which is right here. We're going to subtract away the crown elevation, which is here, plus one half of the outside diameter. OD stands for outside diameter of the main, divided by the distance from the building to the main times 100%. So we're going to take this is this is right here refers to this area of the slide up here. The thing you need to remember about this, and this is a very simple math problem that you guys have done a million times in your in your high school math classes, that it is just simply the rise of the run and the or rise over the run of the sewer lateral pipe. That's all the slope is. The last few slides here show the septic systems that are conventional for uh, places like where my house is. There's a septic tank at my house. I have a drainage field. The fluids uh, come out of the septic tank and they go down to the leach field. Uh, septic tank, which is between the leach field and your house, holds liquids for about two days. The solids settle out and then they go down into your leach field. So these are all the uh, different way of doing a septic treatment at houses uh, that are available to us. Next set of, next uh, video is going to be about doing this calculation.